Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good morning and welcome to Travel Brigade. This is Kathleen Curry here with my co-host, Jeff Griffin. And we're coming to you this week live from Huntington Beach. Let me just tell you, Huntington, we have traveled this coast of Southern California. But let me tell you, Huntington Beach rocks it when it comes to cool. Well, Huntington Beach is Surf City, USA. So we're not only in Surf City, USA, we're here during the U.S. Open of surfing. Could it be any more surf-centric? It could not. It's surf Vana. And, you know, when you think about surfers, you think about, you know, sort of laid back, fun-loving. Huntington Beach, the whole city has that feel to it. It reminds me a little bit of when we were in Calgary during Stampede a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you do a live interview at Duke's Restaurant, it's right in the hub of Surf City. It's where the beach meets the pier meets Main Street. It's right where you want to be to be right in the middle of the action. And not only is Duke's like the best place to hang out, they've got the best food too. Aloha food. Great, great, great food. So a lot of people to get to today. But before we can do that, we first have to do... Hot Topics in Travel. We'll be right back. Next up, Hot Topics in Travel. Questions or comments from the Travel Brigade? Tweet hashtag Travel Brigade or visit TravelBrigade.com. Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your weekly destination travel show here from Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. And we couldn't be here at a better time. We're here during the U.S. Open of Surfing, and we're going to be talking to a lot of different guests about this town with this incredible surf vibe. But before we do that, we first have to do hot topics in travel. So what do you got? Well, U.S. News and World Report earlier this week released their best vacations rankings. Now, really? Yes. Huh. Now, you probably know them as the people who rank all their colleges and universities and different say, programs. Yeah. They also do vacation rankings. Now, this is interesting because vacations are one of those things that, you know, you can't really stay, say with statistical accuracy that this place is better than that place. Or, <laughs> it's one of those things you can debate, like, you know, if, if you and your friends are into music, is, is Arcade Fire better than Radiohead? If you're into sports, you know, would the ni there's been this big debate the last couple of weeks about would the 1992 Dream Team beat the 2012 Olympic basketball team? Things like that. Things you can't really say for New sure. New York over Boston. New York over, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's kind of tough because, you know, the one thing I do like when I travel, I, I can't say that I don't have some of my favorite places. I absolutely do. But some of them are just different. It's a different experience when I go to different Well, and it depends yeah. on when you're going and who you're going with. Are you taking your kids? How right. much money do you have to spend? And this is one of the fun things about it. You can search in multiple different ways through this. You can get... Like different categories? Yeah, different categories. You can do best family vacations in Asia, best honeymoon vacations, best beaches in South America, most affordable family vacations in Europe, things huh. You can search it multiple ways. If you go to their website, which is travel.usnews.com, you'll see all these lists. And one thing that's kind of fun is when you do get these lists up, they let you vote yes or no. Should this have been included? Like, in the, does it belong? Yeah, does oh, this belong? You. And you can click yes or no, and it shows you the the results. Oh. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. Just give me a category, and I'll bring it up. Um... Well, do they have what about best vacations in the US? Best vacations in the US. Number 1 was Yellowstone. Oh. Now, and this is kind of funny cuz I am not by nature a outdoorsy girl. And I have been to Jackson and that Yellowstone area a few times the last couple of years and had such an amazing time and now I know why people go there. And yeah, any chance to go to Jackson, we would we would jump on it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And what's interesting is that the national parks show up here a lot, and there are certain things that you maybe wouldn't think of right offhand that show up a lot. For instance, Vancouver shows up very high on a lot of lists. I love Vancouver. And uh, yeah, I, you know, and I'm not saying it's overrated or anything like that. It's so do you a have the beautiful top place to five go. of U.S. or how? Well, does yeah, it? here's the top. So Yellowstone's number one. Hmm. New York City's number two. Tough love. to argue with that. Washington D.C.'s number three. I like D.C. San Diego, where we were last week was number four. Yeah, no wonder. San Diego's amazing. And, you know, I mean, there's, and then after that, you know, you can really just argue, no, this should, 
this should be number seven and this should be number four and this. But don't you find it really interesting? I mean, just the top two being so diverse. I mean, it's like one thing to say New York, uh, Washington. It's another thing to say Yellowstone, New York City. I mean, those are completely different experiences. Right, right. And what's interesting is when you start to divide it down into best family vacations. Uh huh. And this, this I thought was interesting because the national parks showed up strong here again. They again pick Yellowstone number one. They have Yosemite number three and Grand Canyon number four. So three of the top four spots go to national parks. Guess what was number two? Disney World. Disney World, of oh. course. <laughs> but again, what two completely different yeah, I mean, vacations. Yeah, very different. And both great family vacations, true, just, true. but just very, very different. Right. Well, where can our listeners get, I mean, can they get access to this information? Oh, yeah. You just go to travel.usnews.com. If you didn't write that down, just go to our website, travelbrigade.com. We'll have a hot sheet posted with information from today's show. Up next, we have Madison Fisher from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, who is a Huntington Beach local herself, giving us the local vibe here in Huntington Beach. Stay tuned. You're listening to Travel Brigade. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or check out our website, travelbrigade.com. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Travel Brigade, your weekly travel spot. With highlights of your favorite travel destinations, check out travelbrigade.com and Travel Brigade on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show. This is Kathleen Curry with my co-host Jeff Griffin here in Surf City, USA. Not only here in Surf City, USA, but here during the U.S. Open of Surfing. To find out more about what makes this such a great surf town, we decided to ask Madison Fisher of the Huntington Beach Visitors Bureau. Welcome, Madison. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Good. Hey, tell us, Madison. I mean, I know you are a HB local, and again, we love Huntington Beach. It's one of our favorites. We've got so many favorite destinations here in Southern California. They're hard to choose, but I will tell you, Huntington is on the top of our list. But why is Huntington Surf City... And what makes it such a great destination and gives it that surf vibe? You know, Huntington Beach, um, we're the surf capital of the world. We have the most consistent wave throughout the year um, in all of California. And it's also, we really have the, like you said, the beach vibe. It's um, kind of what everything you'd hope it would be in Southern California to have a surf town. Um, so it's, you know, you walk down the street and everyone's nice and everyone's carrying surfboards and everyone's, you know, Attractive and blonde and tan and it's uh, and a casual a casual dress as well. I mean, beach bathing suits are pretty much that's what you wear. <laughs> yep, that's a uh, standard attire at Huntington Beach. <laughs> it's um, definitely swimsuits, uh, flip flops, sunglasses. That's kind of the uniform here in Huntington. And I thought it was interesting that it also celebrates the history of surfing. There's a surf museum there. There's also a sort of a walk of fame paying tribute to various pioneers in, in the surfing sport. Yeah, and that's actually um, the Surfing Walk of Fame and the Surfing Hall of Fame. They're right on uh, opposite corners of Main Street. So they're right on Main Street and Pacific Coast Highway. And actually this week, um, they'll be inducting some new people into the Walk of Fame and the Hall of Fame. Um, so that's something that they always do you know, on schedule with the U.S. Open. Um, they induct these new huge surfers. So, you know, last year we had the uh, woman that Gidget is actually based on, so the real-life Gidget, oh, um, cool. Rob Machado, was inducted into the Walk of Fame. So it's a really exciting time. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. And then the Surf Museum, like you said, is right downtown. So you can kind of get all of the surf history in a three-block radius, which is something that's really special, I think. And the Surf Museum is really fun. It's a really, I mean, it's not a huge place, but it's just really fun to move through. You can see all sorts of boards from old boards and surfing movies, and just, it's a really fun stuff, and the guys who run it down there are just so great and so knowledgeable about surfing. It's just, you know, they're talking about the swells. It's just really fun. Yeah, they're all surfers themselves, and it's cool because they, you know, just like any other museum, they have rotating exhibits. So you have everything from the history of surfboards. You see the really, really heavy uh, wood surfboards that are, you know, it's mind-boggling how they even carried those down to the beach. To, <laughs> you know, there's the, you know, history of surf wax uh, exhibit, which is actually really interesting, and you can kind of see how surfing came to be in California and in Huntington Beach. I really like how you said how there's kind of this three-block radius downtown where you can find all of this and it's also neat that there's a bunch of surf shops right there on main street by the pier i would say a really great time to hit those is is 
Tuesday night when they're having their outdoor sales? Absolutely, and they have some amazing sales. We um, That little corner right there at Pacific Coast um, Highway and Main Street, we actually say that's kind of the Times Square of surf culture. Um, <laughs> you can kind of get everything you need in surf culture right in that corner. So you got the pier, and then you have... Uh, Huntington Surf and Sport, and then Jack's, um, which are two of the biggest surf shops. Um, but, yeah, like you said, they do have big outdoor sales every Tuesday night during Surf City Nights. Um, so it's a great time to get your discounted wetsuits and bathing suits and flip-flops and everything that you need to look like a surfer in Huntington Beach City Nights. And tell us what else they do on Surf City Nights. I know they've got bands and food and other things going. It's crazy. It's fun. It's Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it's it's every Tuesday, um, year-round, really the only time that they don't do Surf City Nights is when it rains, and it's very, very rarely raining in Huntington Beach, so <laughs> that uh, doesn't happen too often, um, but they close down the first three blocks of Main Street, so from Pacific Coast Highway to Orange, um, and they have a street fair, so they'll do, uh, you know, one block will be kind of farmer's market focused, uh, the next block will be um, kind of crafts and jewelry and clothing to purchase, um, they have a food court, they have, you know, blow up slides for kids and face painting and if you kind of want to see what Huntington Beach is and how the locals live here that's kind of you get a feel for what Huntington Beach is just walking around during surf city nights. Any other events that we should know about coming up in the summer or fall obviously you know the U.S. Open is a huge thing but uh, any other things going on that that people would want to know about? You know what's one of my favorite events is the Surf City Surf Dog that happens every September. Um, and because we are Surf City USA, even our dogs surf in Huntington Beach. Um, <laughs> so they actually uh, will take them down to Dog Beach, and it's a big uh, three-day event that they actually put dogs up on surfboards. They have, like, really cute little life jackets, and they put them on surfboards, and they actually surf, and they do a surf competition. And, it's, <laughs> you know, it makes for some of the best photos ever. Um, but it's also just, you know... It's a very cool kind of unique event for Huntington. And we're going to talk about later in the show how pet-friendly Huntington is. But, yeah, if you have Fido and you want to bring him down to the beach and you want him to surf, plan that ahead here in September. Tell us also, what are the top attractions? What draws people there? What are the to-do things on your list while you're there? Gosh, um, I mean, going to the beach is a huge one. We have um, 10 miles of uninterrupted beach. We're actually the longest uninterrupted beach in Southern California. Lounging on the beach and going to the beach and getting in the water is definitely a huge one. But going to the pier and kind of just strolling the pier is a kind of a must-do thing for Huntington Beach. Um, we also have a lot of great activities, bike rentals, um, are all along the sand, so you can rent a bike and kind of cruise around Huntington Beach. There's also different ways to tour Huntington Beach, like we have Segway tours that actually go on the sand through GW Tour. That's I mean, actually really fun. They have these inflatable tires that you can actually take the Segways on the beach. Yeah, and I mean, everyone has Segways right now, but ours are definitely different that you can kind of tour around on the sand. If you're exactly. going to see Huntington Beach, you want to be on the sand. What about surfing? If you've got a person who looks at the surfers and thinks, hey, that's really cool, but I could never do it. We have lots of surf lessons. You know, you can kind of stand on the beach and there's tons and tons of beach concessionaires and places that will offer surf lessons um, for, you know, a nominal cost. Easy enough, we actually have a company um, called Toes on the Nose. They actually operate um, out of the Hyatt Regency. They will claim they claim that you will actually stand up on a surfboard by the end of your lesson. So and that's, for the um, locals, you know, that's called that's called popping up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, it is it's a hard thing to do. We definitely don't recommend. Um, you know, there's places that you can rent surfboards as well, but it's a little frustrating to get out in the water and not get a lesson because you feel like it should be so easy, but it's not. So we definitely recommend getting a lesson from one of the schools in Huntington Beach. Well, Madison, where can people contact uh, Huntington Beach Visitors Bureau to get more information about all the great things to do there? You can visit our website, which is www.surfcityusa.com. Thank you very much for joining us. You're listening to Travel Brigade. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and check out our website, travelbrigade.com. We'll be right back. Have any trouble questions? Call the Travel Brigade at 714-694-4109. Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your weekly travel destination show here in Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. The weather is amazing out there today. 
and the weather couldn't come at a better time because we are here during the U.S. Open of surfing. And if you haven't booked your plane tickets or gotten down here for this week, you've got all week to get down here before the finals this coming weekend. But if you want to just pick up on the surf vibe of this place, you can come any time of the year. Any time. It's so funny. A lot of people are almost shocked because they know it's here, but it's so embedded in the culture here. Yeah, and one thing I love is how they also respect the history of surfing and the surf culture. And we talked a little bit in our interview with Madison about the International Surfing Museum and also the Walk of Fame. There's even just little touches all around the town. Yeah, for an example, even on the bus benches, you've got a flat bench and you've got a huge cement surf wave going over to keep shade. So it's really funny to see those as well, just right down the street. And we wanted to talk to somebody who could give us some perspective on the history of surfing here and all that's gone on here and made this place what it is. And so we called up Rick Fignetti. Now, Rick is what his mom calls him. The rest of the world calls him Rock and Fig. He's a surf legend, got his own star on the Walk of Fame here, has had a shop here in town for over 20 years, a great source for surfing knowledge. Rock and Fig's also known from the popular station down here, K-Rock, where for many years he did the surf report for them. So coming up next... We're going to talk to Rock and Fig. You're listening to Travel Brigade. We'll be right back. Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show, and this show on one of my favorites of Southern California, Huntington Beach. One of the biggest surfing contests of the whole year is the U.S. Open, and we're going to be here this week. Yeah, it couldn't get any better. Surf City, USA, here for the U.S. Open, and we're talking to Rock and Fig, also known as Rick Fignetti, live from his surf shop right in Huntington Beach, the Rock and Fig Surf Shop. Thank you for joining us, Rick. Hey, how's it going, everybody out there? <laughs> yo, 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 the Figster. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Rock and Fig is on the Surf City, walk, what is it called? Walk the of Walk fame. of Fame. Walk of Fame. He's a star down here. He's had his surf shop here for over 20 years. What led you to open your shop there in Huntington? I um, just worked in a lot of bunch of surf shops when I was a younger kid, and then uh, one of my favorite ones, you know, that we that I used to work with, kind of like, you know, they were having a hard time, and they weren't putting people back. I went to Hawaii for a while and came back, and they weren't putting people back to work. So I was just uh, saw a buddy of mine. I was actually going to host a, a TV show from the poor man, and we went up there, and we're, we're saying, hey, no good surf shops yet. Should we open one? And he said, yeah, and we got the money together and started one up about 22 years ago right on Main Street. Very good. Tell us a little bit about why Huntington Beach is such a great – I mean, for people that have never visited, why – go to Huntington Beach. I mean, it is such a great, small town, fun beach city. Tell us what's so great about it. Well, I mean, Huntington Beach is pretty cool because it's known as, you know, one of the surfing capitals of the world, Surf City, and uh, it seems like it's the center point, you know, on California. All the freeways kind of lead around the Huntington Beach, and we get waves like year-round. We get swells from the north, west, south. They all seem to roll in pretty good. I mean, they're not perfection waves, but there always seems like there's something to ride down here. Yeah, what is it about the, there's a certain vibe when you're in Huntington Beach. What is it that you think gives the town that? I mean, it, it seems like a surf town. Just, just Even if you're not a surfer, just walking around, it seems like a surf town. What is it that gives Huntington Beach that vibe? Well, we got about five or six surf shops right on Main Street, so that's kind of cool, and some are known as some of the best ones in the world. But, you know, it just seems everybody's a little bit more laid back down here. There's a bunch of outside places you can eat. And uh, it's just a really safe community and stuff and kind of fun and enjoyable to just hang out on the beach. And if you like surfing, you can get out there and do it. Uh, it you know, if, if you like surfing, you don't even have to get out there and do it. You can stand on the pier and kind of check it all out, too, because a lot of the best surfers in the world all come to Huntington. You know, that's true. I was going to say, I used to, in my young, young ages, be able to pop up on a board, and I have to say, can't really do it anymore, but I love standing on the pier <laughs> watching everybody all right else on. do it. <laughs> Hey, tell us a little bit, I mean, the U.S. Open, amazing. I mean, thousands and thousands of people coming to town. What is the U.S. Open for those people that don't understand? Why is it so popular? I mean, world-class surfing. Tell us a little bit about it. 
well, we get the U.S. Open here, and the top 30 surfers in the world, they usually sign up to be in it. Then you can back that up with uh, hundreds of more surfers that, that are the best. You know, last year, Kelly Slater ended up winning. He's like 11-time world champ. And the waves are set up. To, they're they're kind of rippable, but they're also good for pulling big airs and stuff. So it kind of, you know, makes it you can see a lot of what's happening to the future of surfing besides just riding a wave and ripping it up. And, uh, yeah, we do get the big crowds. I mean, like I say, uh, besides surfing, there's bands that play down here. We usually have uh, skateboarding and BMX, everything all happening. They set up a bunch of tents on the beach. I mean, it's like a big, giant carnival and stuff. That's you know, what I was going to say. I mean, it's like a week-long party. <laughs> yeah, it's an extravaganza. Parties every night. All the clubs in town are kind of going off, and uh, people from all around the world mark it down on their calendars around the U.S., and I mean, we get probably like 500,000 people down here. It's kind of like the Super Bowl of surfing. Last day on the beach, you're probably looking at 150,000 people with an arena-like setting, the pier, the stands, on the sand on the beach. And like I say, you get a first-hand look. Besides looking at magazines, you see it with your eyes, guys surfing out in the water. You know, it's funny. Some of those pictures of the U.S. Open during those last days, you pretty much can't see the beach. It's just full of people up and down, so it's pretty oh. amazing. Yeah, it's packed. When guys are coming out for their heats, or they're, they're running straight out from the compound. That's what we call it. And people are all lined up on the side. And, you know, it's it's really something to see. It's the biggest crowds in the world for sure. Tell us a little bit about your surf shop. Uh, I got a little surf shop. It's kind of hardcore. Started, like I say, about 22 years ago. And, uh, I mean, a lot of the surf shops these days, they call themselves surf shops. So they're selling mostly clothes. I mean, we're pretty much all surfboards from high performance to fish to single tries, four fins, we've got mid-ranges, long boards, so a little bit of everything, but uh, we're just, uh, we're pumped, we're stoked to get people out in the water surfing and having a good time. So, can you give them a contact information if they want to come by the shop? Uh, 714-536-1058, ask for the fig stir, my son's hanging out in here, and uh, one thing we do say is, a lot of times we might open up a little bit late, you know, we don't usually open up till noon, but we got to do the first-hand thing, get out in the water, do a little surfing ourselves. And, you know, last week the Figster got lucky. I won two U.S. titles in the NSSA. So, you oh, know, nice. backing it up right there. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, when we talk about the surf culture and surf vibe, that also applies to shop hours. So if the <laughs> waves are good... You better not expect anyone to be in the shop. Isn't that right? I'm a bad I'm a bad businessman really, but you know what? I love surfing and I only got so many years left. I go that's where I really want to be. Yeah, and if you want information about the US Open, it's usopenofsurfing.com. You can also check that out online. Thank you very much for joining us, Rock and Fig. Hey, don't forget everybody, come on down. It's gonna be happening first week of August. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Thanks so much. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show. We'll be right back. Have you friended Travel Brigade yet? Well, you can at their website with links to Twitter and Facebook, as well as lots of great articles for all your travel needs. www.travelbrigade.com Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your weekly Sunday travel destination show here in Huntington Beach. I think the next segment, we should take the mics and go out on a board. That would be cool. I don't know, waterproof mics, obviously. Well, I mean, let's just be honest. We can't pop up anymore. Yeah. We're going to be there. <laughs> we could be standing there with the mics overhead. Maybe one of the surfers from the U.S. Open will come and save us. But you know what? You don't have to be a surfer to just really enjoy this town. No. Because you can go out on the beach. You can go out on the pier. You can go along the boardwalk. But you can also go up and down Main Street. And we just talked with Rock and Fig. He's got his shop there. But there are also other surf shops, restaurants along there. And a lot of these surf shops have really cool clothes to buy. That's true. Lots of fun things to buy. Whether you're a surfer or not or just here in the vibe, it's a great, great place to hang out. The people watching is amazing here. Right. As we mentioned before, I think in Madison's interview, right at the corner of where PCH meets Main Street, you've got Huntington Surf and Sport on one side and Jack's on the other. Sort of the Lakers, Celtics, Red Sox, Yankees. <laughs> I don't know what kind of a rivalry it is, but it's two amazing places. See, and I think I think they should just go to both. Buy both yeah. and then... No, yeah. I would encourage you to go to both. Yeah. I particularly encourage you to go there during Surf City Nights on Tuesday night. Yeah, it's super fun. We were talking about Madison about that, and we love going. Even if you never plan to get on a surfboard for the rest of your life, it's a great place to get flip-flops, T-shirts, swimsuits, shorts, just... All that stuff. Yep. Also, just off 
of PCH. There are two great hotels here right on PCH. One is the Hilton. That's true, the Waterfront Hilton, and also the Hyatt, Huntington Beach Hyatt. So coming up next, we're going to be talking with both of them and talking about why they're both great places to stay and what makes each one of them unique and different. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning destination show here in Huntington Beach, the coolest place in Southern California. We'll be right back. Have you friended Travel Brigade yet? Well, you can at their website with links to Twitter and Facebook, as well as lots of great articles for all your travel needs. www.travelbrigade.com Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show, here live from Huntington Beach. And we're here doing the U.S. Open. It's a beautiful place to be, lots of great waves. And a great place to stay when you're here is the Waterfront Beach Resort, the Hilton, here in Huntington Beach, and here to tell us about it is Scott O'Hanlon. Welcome, Scott. Hi there. Thank you. Tell us a little bit. One thing that uh, we had done before that we thought was just wonderful was the waterfront adventures. Tell us a little bit about those. A beach butler. I mean, let's face it. Where are you going to go where you have somebody do all the work for you? Well, I really appreciate you saying that, and the answer is you would really go nowhere but (laughs) the waterfront beach resort. With beach butler service from Waterfront Adventures, we've got you covered. And I mean that quite literally because we have pop-up cabanas that can take you out onto the beach, shielding you from the harshest part of the afternoon sun. We've got your own private fire pits that we're able to take out and then servicing you with comfortable beach lounge chairs, towel service, waters brought out to you. And right next door is an iconic California classic, world famous Wahoos fish tacos. So you've got all that happening right there at Waterfront Adventures. And there is in Huntington Beach no other resort, hotel, uh, really that can offer you the service that we do on the sand and steps from the way. We did the um, nighttime s'mores kit, and not only did they set it up, bring us the s'mores, bring us drinks, the best part was we didn't even keep adding logs on the fire. I mean, they kept catering. We just sat and enjoyed. It was great. You know, I've done it the other way where you have to go put your chairs by the pit at 8 a.m. and hope that nobody takes them, and then you've got to get your own logs and drag them over there and everything, and this was so much better. This is pretty much Walk up, sit down, and allow us to take care of you. I mean, you're never going to touch uh, uh, any of the firewood. We've got all of your s'mores fixings right there, and you're just going to be absolutely blown away by everything that they're able to do at Waterfront Adventures. And that's in addition to everything else that they've got going on, from beach toy rentals to surfboards to bike rentals, Surrey bikes to take up uh, up and down on the boardwalk. Uh, once you're there, whether you're staying at the resort or you're a local or you're just a visitor coming in for the U.S. Open, uh, you can come down to Waterfront Adventures and take full advantage of everything that we have there. There's no guest requirement whatsoever. So that's kind of a nice added feature that we have for everyone. That is really fun. Scott, tell people what a Surrey is because I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure people can understand. Like, the boardwalk is amazing. Is it like five miles that goes up and down the beach? It's eight and a half. Oh, well, there you go. I cut it by two. From one three. end to the other. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be a workout. The the advice I have for you, first of all, anytime you have a bike rental or a Surrey rental or a trike rental, and these are adult trikes, by the way, <laughs> you need to start with the wind and start rolling in, in er, against the wind, rather, because the wind will carry you back the other direction. Oh, it's very really good. easy very to good. get going. Yeah, you're going to go, you know, five miles in one direction if the wind's at your back. But you have to remember, you do need to turn around and come <laughs> back to us at some point. So keep that in mind while you're out there having a good time. But uh, a Surrey is essentially a a four-person, almost like mini cab. It's got a fringed covered top and four wheels and able to go up and down onto the beach. It's just absolutely wonderful. And they look like an old-fashioned bike. I mean, it's just got a little top on it. It's just they're really fun. You see lots of families doing them. We've done one before, and... Yeah, the way I would describe it is if you think about those Flintstones cars, but it's got pedals. That's exactly right. Yeah, you can almost imagine Fred Flintstone's uh, uh, little dinosaur Dino poking his head through the top yeah. when you come out there. Could you add that as a feature <laughs> at Water Thunder? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we find a Dino, we'll put that right on our it's list. It's going to be a small you know, upgrade, I, small upgrade. But... Uh, and, and we are a pet-friendly hotel. You've got Dog Beach down the way where you can bring all of your dogs. We've got uh, the ability, if you're staying at our resort, um, dogs are welcome. And yeah, tell us about that because I think that, 
I think that's so unique to Huntington Beach to have the dog beach and also to have hotels that welcome, you know, welcome dogs. Well, yeah, and if you go to our website, you can even see uh, it's a wonderful dog's life at waterfrontresort.com. You can check that out right there and see how much your dog is loved and welcomed from the moment he gets out. He's treated as a member of the family or she um, mm-hmm. by the valets and brought right in and checked in just as one of our guests would be. And uh, the dogs and and cats and and all of our wonderful animals that come and stay with us, they get special amenities as well. Oh, that's great. And tell us a little bit about Dog Beach that's just down the way from the hotel. Dog Beach is about, uh, oh, I would say two and a half, three miles away from the hotel. Uh, It is, um, it's, it's. It's really uh, an interesting and beautiful area that is kind of unique to Huntington Beach because the dogs and and dog owners are allowed to actually take their dogs out onto the sand. Almost every beach in California restricts pets uh, to be on their leash or, or not taken down onto the sand, but you can take your dog onto the beach as long as they are are on their leashes and uh, and and well maintained. Tell us a little bit about the, the Hilton. Why is it such a great option for people that are coming to Huntington and what's new and upcoming this year at the hotel? Well, upcoming now, of course, we we've got uh, the US Open which is which is the biggest and largest event of the season that is happening, but at the resort itself, uh if you are coming, you've got to make sure that you're staying with us on a Friday or Saturday night to see the Mancota. Uh, show that we've got out on our pool deck every single evening at sunset. It is the the legend of the surf hero, one of the greatest stories ever told. And really, you'll learn how all of the waves came to Huntington Beach through the story of Mancota. Uh, or if you don't happen to make the Mancota show, you need to get yourself out onto our pool deck and enjoy everything that the surf hero market can do to take care of you in a lounge chair, soaking up the rays, You are at ground zero and the central point for everything that is happening beach-related. And then for your listeners that are out there that may not be able to make it for the U.S. Open, uh, remember our summertime and best weather will continue right on through Thanksgiving. You can come out absolutely anytime. And that's when you've got the best beach parking, too. That's why I love California. (laughs) The weather just goes forever. It's beautiful. Scott, tell us where people can get a hold of the Hilton to find out more information. Uh, If you want to come to us, uh, please go onto our website, which is waterfrontresort.com. That's waterfrontresort.com. You can book directly there and see all of our weekly updated specials and availability and room types, everything from suites. And I might mention that every single room in our hotel is ocean-facing. Oh, beautiful. So you're all going to have an ocean view. No matter where you are, you're going to be able to see us. And uh, you can just go ahead and book yourself right on there. Uh, and Or you can go to the Hilton website on Worldwide. But we'd love to have you in any way that you can find us. Now, is that also where they contact you for Waterfront Adventures, or is that a separate website? Uh, Waterfront Adventures, actually, uh, you can you can book right there on our website as well, waterfrontresort.com, Perfect. or you can call Waterfront Adventures directly. And if you want, I can give you that number. Sure, that'd be great. Uh, you can just call the hotel exchange. That's area code 714-845-8000, 714-845-8000. Just ask for Waterfront Adventures. They'll connect you right over at the beach and our beach professionals and beach butlers are waiting to hear from you right now. Well, thank you very much, Scott. If those of you who didn't have your pencil out, uh, you can find all that information he just gave on our website at travelbrigade.com where we'll have a hot sheet posted with contact information for all of our guests today. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for your time, and we will love to see you at the beach. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Travel Brigade, your weekly travel spot. With highlights of your favorite travel destinations, check out TravelBrigade.com and Travel Brigade on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show with Kathleen Curry and Jeff Griffin. Of course, being in this beautiful city of Huntington Beach, there's surfers out on the water. It's one of my favorite towns here in Southern California. It's a great place. Great time to be here during the U.S. Open. But you're going to wear yourself out out on those waves all day. You got to find some place to lay down and go to sleep. That's right, a place to lay your head. And so we have Stephanie Kaplan from the Hyatt Regency Huntington Beach Resort and Spa here to tell us where to do that. Welcome to the show. 
Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You have one of the best locations right there on PCH. Beautiful sand there and a great view of the pier. I think it's such a great location right there. It's phenomenal, actually. It's uh, the resort from top to bottom is phenomenal location, the resort itself, everything. Why is Huntington Beach such a great place to visit? Huntington Beach is really a, a great town. It's more of a, it's a total beach town. And uh, obviously we have six miles of pristine beach right outside our doors there. But Huntington Beach itself um, is a little bit of a quieter destination, not during the U.S. Surf Open, of course. But, <laughs> um, but uh, is more of a, a quiet family destination or honeymoon destination than somewhere like uh, busy Santa Monica or busy San Diego. So Huntington Beach has a lot to offer um, in terms of its location as well. Now, tell us a little bit about some of the family programs. Uh, we are extremely family friendly. And there are a couple of things that stand out in my mind that make us so family friendly. Number one is we have two pools at the resort. We have an adult pool and what we call a sliders children's water playground. That's actually and really lot- fun. I've been to sliders before. It's a great place. You it's have? Great- yeah, I have. It's a great place. Have you been down the water slide? I have. I have. Okay. <laughs> Had well, a cabana. Have- it, was, it was great. <laughs> Lunch, we cabana, have- everything was great. Absolutely. And and we have three water slides available. We have wading pools. Uh, we have cabanas, as you said, for rent. And there's also a bar and grill at that pool. So what's nice is if you are with families, you can be there and the kids can splash and make as much noise as they want. Or if you're at the adult pool, you don't have to deal with the kids. So um, we, we also believe in have... family all time togetherness, and when families can spend some time alone. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, it's the best of all worlds. Exactly. We also have uh, Camp Hyatt at all of our Hyatt resorts, and Camp Hyatt is for ages three to twelve, and it's not babysitting. What it is, it's it's a camp for the kids, and. The kids do things with the counselors that are native to the areas where they are. For example, for us, they would build sandcastles and they would learn about sea life and they would do things affiliated with the water and the beach. Whereas if they were in a place like Tahoe, they would take hikes and paint pine cones and do things like that. So it's not glorified babysitting. It's a whole program for children. And we have uh, morning sessions, afternoon sessions, all day sessions, and even evening sessions so that parents can go out for dinner. Tell us a little bit about the property itself. What type of rooms do you have? I know there's some gorgeous view rooms that you can look at on the ocean, but to to accommodate different types of uh, families, couples, those types of things. Sure. What What's very unique about our property is we have such a variety of room types. We have rooms, we have and, and we have 57 suites at the hotel. So any kind of family configuration we can handle at the resort. But what makes us unique is 85% of our rooms have a view of the water. When they built this resort, they built everything facing outward. We have rooms with either one king bed or two queen size beds, not double beds, but queens. So those are really uh, there's a that's big a difference. I know sometimes Absolutely. when the people, I know a lot of times when you book hotels, you'll say two beds, and a lot of people make the assumption that they're queens, but a lot of times they are full. <laughs> they are, or in the case in Europe or Asia, it's a single bed. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So <laughs> been there, done um, that on more than one occasion. Not not the best feeling. <laughs> no, no, not since college have we slept in a single bed. <laughs> But uh, we also have what are called deluxe kings, and those are larger king guest rooms with a pull-out sofa. And what's really nice is every room in the resort has a balcony or patio. Oh, that's so nice. So everybody can go out and enjoy the outdoors. And I know so you have a beautiful have- spa in the back that, that's just been redone. I've been out there as well, and there's a great patio out there, and I know some really um, great spa treatments that you have. And I remember that you have some kind of an orange lotion that I got last time there, and I still remember the smell <laughs> of it. Yeah, our lotions are famous. Um, Yeah, it's called Pacific Water Spa, and it's very popular and very busy this summer, which is wonderful. And we have a multitude of treatment rooms and treatment options, facials, couples massages, regular massages, stone massages. Uh, We also have a wellness program, and the wellness program goes through nutrition and uh, fitness And we have a director of wellness, so people can sign up to do that as well. When people are at the resort, 
with the resort fee that they pay, they have access to the spa. So if you're not getting a treatment but you still want to go take a sauna or a jacuzzi, you can do that. In oh, that's spa. nice. Speaking of packages, I noticed when I was looking in law- online, you have this uh, package called the Five Days of Summer. It seems like it just includes everything and you don't even need to think about anything. It's really nice because you're right. Um, for people that don't love to plan every aspect of their vacation, they can just do an all-inclusive package. And what this is, it's called our Best Five Days of Summer, and it includes uh, overnight room for five days, four nights, two Disneyland hopper passes for two adults and two children, daily breakfast for up to four people, two half-day bike rentals, complimentary valet parking, and we have fire pits located throughout the hotel, and so we'll give a s'mores kit to the families. Oh, fun. So they can go out and grow s'mores, and then uh, access, obviously, to the water playground, the pools, and everything. So it really is a seamless vacation for people. I think that it's really easy to book. It's, it, you're able to book it online or direct with reservations. So Speaking you're right, of that, tell us where people that are interested in staying at the Hyatt, where they can contact the Hyatt or get information either via the phone or internet? Sure. Uh, The best place for the most up-to-date information is our internet. And the website is www.huntingtonbeach.hyatt.com. And then we also have the direct line to the hotel is area code 714-698-1234. Or an 800 number for reservations is 800 233 one, two, three, four. Thank you very much, Stephanie. If those of you who didn't write all that down, just go to our website, travelbrigade.com. We're going to have contact information for all of our guests today posted there to go along with this show. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel show. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, and check out our website, travelbrigade.com. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Travel Brigade, your weekly travel spot. With highlights of your favorite travel destinations, check out TravelBrigade.com and Travel Brigade on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel destination show. This is Jeff Griffin here along with Kathleen Curry in Surf City, USA, during the U.S. Open of Surfing. And you know who else can surf? Your dog. I know. You know... It's so, we don't have a dog because we travel so much, but, you know, if we knew we could come to Huntington Beach all the time and take the pets and everyone, you know, welcomes them at the hotel, some of the restaurants, they can be in the patio, they have their own beach for crying out loud. Yeah, there's a section of the beach here called Dog Beach where you can bring a dog and we were riding there yesterday up along the boardwalk there and tons and tons of dogs and Running People. around in the water. And then mm. I've seen dogs surfing before, but I had no idea that they had this big special event where dogs could get on boards and they'd have some kind of a surf championship for dogs. That is pretty cool. Again, on our website, travelbrigade.com, you can find our hot sheet for today's show, and we will have information about how to contact Dog Beach and find out more about the regulations and everything there. So excited for our next interview. I love Duke's. We're going to take you out of the studio and right down into the heart of the action at Duke's. As Madison talked about before, the Times Square of surfing, Duke's is where the pier meets PCH, meets the boardwalk, meets Main Street. It's the heart of the action. This is Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel destination show here in Surf City. We'll be right back. Jeff Griffin coming to you live from Dukes in Huntington Beach and our Huntington Beach show this week, all about surfing and Huntington. As we look out here from Dukes, we can see the setup for the U.S. Open of surfing. It's all going on right outside the windows here. And we're really lucky because we've got from Dukes, Brett Barnes here to tell us all about this wonderful place. Welcome, Brett. Thank you. Nice to be here. Tell us 
a little bit about the restaurant scene here in Huntington. I mean, a lot of people think about it as a surf town, but I mean, everyone's got to eat. There's great food here in Huntington. Tell us a little bit just about the, the restaurant scene in Huntington in general. It's a pretty vibrant scene. Right up Main Street, we have over 30 restaurants and, and bars and pubs. So there's lots to choose from everywhere from North Shore Pokey Company over on 5th Street to Duke's to Spark across the street. So good variety of food and fun. And it's uh, you can come down here virtually every night and get something different. So it's pretty eclectic. I've been to Zimzala before and the Sugar Shack where you get breakfast. So there's lots of little fun, you know, great places all around here. But Duke's is known. I mean, not only does it have the best location, but it's got the greatest Hawaiian influence on its food. Um, tell us a little bit about Duke's and how it came to be and about Duke and, and how it all ties together with the surfing here and the big surf culture here yeah. in Huntington Beach. And a lot of people might be asking, who was Duke? Right. <laughs> well, we're a Hawaiian-based company and Duke's is one of our concepts and we named the restaurant after Duke Hanamoku, who was the father of surfing, first guy to surf in Huntington Beach, first guy to spread surfing all over the world, really. Really, and he was voted the most influential surfer of the century by Surfer Magazine a few years ago. And so when we decided to dedicate Duke's uh, restaurants to him, we had to carry on his legacy. Um, and that is multiple ways we do that. One is we created the Outrigger Duke Conomoku Foundation that part of our profits from the five Dukes we have go to that family's foundation to help keep his legacy alive in partnership with Outrigger Hotels in Hawaii. Um, and we, uh, we dedicate a lot of the stuff in the building to his history, what he did as a person. For instance, he was in 30 movies. He made a dramatic rescue in Corona Del Mar back in the 50s. He, if you were the President of the United States back in the 60s and went to Hawaii, he'd be the official greeter that greeted you at the airport, not the governor. He was just the ambassador of Aloha. So what that means for our, our restaurant company is that we're super Hawaiian-type friendly to everybody. And we have really fresh fish and great Hawaiian Mai Tais. And we try to live up to his legacy of Aloha every day. As you mentioned, there's a big statue of Duke here in Huntington Beach, right across the street that you'll want to check out and check out the, the surf walk of fame over there. Where are the other four Dukes located? Uh, the other four, we have one in Maui, we have one in Kauai, we have one on Oahu, and then we have one up in Malibu in, here in California. So we have five Dukes t total, we have 13 total restaurants. We're a Hawaiian-based company, uh, so that's where our Hawaiian influence comes from uh, for Dukes especially. And uh, the Duke statue that's in front of Huntington Surf and Sport is a testament to the influence he has in the surf industry. You know, the surf industry is based in or Orange County and especially in Huntington Beach and uh, Costa Mesa. And it's really, Duke's fits so well because of the surfing connection and with all the surf uh, companies here and the U.S. Open here, it's just everybody hangs out at Duke's and uh, it just makes the whole day when you come check out surfing for the day and then come in here and have my time of piece of fresh fish. The one thing I like about Dukes is, is too is that you really can can do Dukes anyway. I mean, you literally can get dressed up there. You know, if you can hear the background right now, people are here celebrating birthdays, celebrations. People are getting dressed up, and then you go downstairs to the bar area, and people are in their bikinis right off the beach. I mean, you can do it either way. Yeah, we cater to every age group, and and we have something for everybody. And just like you said, you come in on your flip flops and t shirt and, and your wet trunks, or you come in dressed nice to celebrate an anniversary or something. So it's been a it's a good fit. Not too fancy, but it's not too too casual either. Right in the middle. Tell us about the food. I mean, the shrimp, I remember the shrimp from the last time I was here. It's still, I can still taste it in my mouth. But Duke's has some great things uh, that you want to try when you're here. What, what are some of those things? Well, our signature items are fresh fish. We get our fish in daily from sustainable sources and, uh, you know, fresh tropical fish, which is hard to get, like opa and the opaca and onos. So those are really nice. You have to have fish when you come here. We have ahi pokey tacos that are fabulous. Um, everybody raves about our hula pie. That's our website as well, hulapie.com. This is a big ice cream pie that everybody has for dessert. It's a huge thing. You can feed four or five people with it. Mm -hmm. um, and our Mai Tais are authentic Mai Tais made with four juices, uh, passion, orange, guava, and pineapple juice. Most people make uh, Mai Tais with just pineapple and orange juice. So our Mai Tais are authentic. Our fresh fish is, you know, from tropical waters and a lot from Hawaii. So we have a little bit of everything. We have coconut shrimp you talked about. We have great salads and sandwiches. 
outstanding cheeseburgers, believe it or not, at a, at a fish restaurant. So you got some for everybody. Well, tell us, if, you know, people that are coming to visit Huntington Beach, I mean, the U.S. Open, as I have been making jokes to this whole show, when the U.S. Open goes on, you really can't see the sand because there's so many people on the beach. But people that are coming here, visiting either for the U.S. Open or planning a trip later on this summer or in the fall, where can they get a hold of Duke? Please come visit. September's a great time to come. Weather's still nice, water's warm, and uh, it's not nearly as crowded as during the U.S. Open. But always get a hold of us at our website at hulapai.com or dukeshuntington.com, and our phone number is 714-374-6446. If you didn't get all that down, you can always go to our website, travelbrigade.com, where we'll have contact information about all of today's guests. And if you are down here, really, just just ask people how to get to the pier, and Dukes is right there, and you can't miss it. You'll stumble right on it. You can't miss it. Great views of the pier, and, and uh, Ruby's another fun one down there. You have a great view of the red roof of Ruby's, which is, you know, a great place to go to. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Again, this is Travel Brigade coming to you live from Huntington Beach. We'll be right back. Travel Brigade, your Sunday morning travel destination show. We came in from the craziness outside. We came in to do our He Said, She Said segment, tell you a little bit about our show next week, and then we're bolting it back outside to see the surfers. All right. Time for He Said, She Said, and as always, She Said goes first. These are our top three things for this destination. Huntington Beach is amazing. It's got a great, great boardwalk. I've told you all about the surf vibe. I've told you how I think this literally is the coolest place in Southern California. But one of the things I like the best, hopping on my beach cruiser and heading on the boardwalk for a nice, long bike ride. Yeah, and you can get the beach cruisers. You can rent them here for, I've seen them as low as $10 a day. There are places right on the boardwalk that rent them for 10 bucks an hour. Easy to do. Or pick one up like I did and take it home. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> My number three is the beach butler service that we Ah, talked about earlier. So nice. There's nothing better than a bonfire at night at the beach. Well, there's one thing better. That's when somebody else (laughs) takes care of all the work and builds the fire for you and keeps it going. Jim, we forgot to ask Waterfront Adventures if we could take one of the beach butlers home with us. That would be great. That's one of the areas where if you're going to splurge a little bit on a vacation, like maybe you're taking your family and you're trying to you know, keep costs under control and everything, but you want to just do one splurge thing, I would do that. That's true. The beach butler experience, you cannot beat. Okay. What's your number two? My number two, because I was raised in this area, is nostalgia. I love coming back here. It's so funny how there's so many new and upcoming things, but so many things that are just the same as when I grew up here. Like I said, I haven't lived here in 20 years, but so many things are still the same. I took Jeff to the beach down to Dwight's to get cheese strips, which is tortilla chips with raw, not cooked cheddar cheese on top with a special Dwight sauce. And it was nostalgic. We used to count change to try with all my friends just to try and get one order when we were younger. My number two is segs on the beach. That is segways on the beach through GW Tours. It's really fun. We will have contact information about them on our website, travelbrigade.com. That brings us to our number one choices. What is yours? The pier. No doubt. Love it. Walking on the pier in Huntington is such a fun experience, whether you're People watching, watching the surfers in the water, watching the lifeguards in their towers, or walking down to Ruby's to get a nice shake and some chili cheese fries. All amazing. Yeah. In fact, we love the Huntington Beach Pier so much, we've got it as sort of the headline photo on our website. That's true. Okay. My number one is sort of in that same vein. We talked before with Madison about the Times Square of surfing. And that's what I really love about this place is just kind of being there on Main Street and walking from Main Street down to the beach or coming back up. And the, you just kind of feel like you're at the center of the surf universe, which you indeed are. Huntington is amazing. If you haven't been here, 
please come. It is such a great surf town, so California in so many ways. And those of you that have been here are probably itching to get back, so come back as soon as you can. Such a great place to be. We've been lucky to spend the last few weeks here in Southern California, but we can't get out of here without doing the thing that Southern California is maybe most known for after the beach. That's true. Theme parks all week long. We're going to hit Disney. SeaWorld. Universal. Legoland. Going to hit them all. And then we're going to come back next Sunday and tell you all about them, all the new things they've got going on. This is really a great summer to be here for theme parks because they've all got these amazing new rides going. I I have a feeling, though. Yes? My feet are going to hurt. Wow, that's that's just part of the price you pay for the thrills. That's true. 18 hours a day, each day in every theme park. Can't wait to share it all with you next week. In the meantime... There are two stages in life. You're either on a trip or you're planning your next trip. Whatever stage you're in, we hope you'll join us next week for the Travel Brigade radio show. Enjoy the rest of your day while we go out back on the beach, watch the U.S. Open, and have some fun. See you next week. You've been listening to the Travel Brigade on Blog Talk Radio. Listen live every Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Contact us on Twitter, Facebook, and at TravelBrigade.com. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.